In RoboQuest, the highest difficulty you can play is hard, until you beat the game on hard. Then you unlock Guardian ranks. There's four of them. As soon as I unlock the fourth one, I decided to do this. This seems like a good time to do the uh, default pistol run. On the hardest difficulty, right after we unlock it. Why did I even look? I'm, I'm going to be using default pistol. It doesn't even matter. Now, we brought Ranger with us because one, it's my favorite class, but two, because it does a lot of crit damage, and I like to shoot things in their crit spots. Pair that up with some invisibility and javelins that can potentially mark targets, and you're always going to have a good time. Now, for those unaware, here's the modifiers for G4. Enemy health being buffed by 50% is pretty uh, big when we're using the starter pistol, and their damage and aggressiveness being buffed by 40% is nothing to scoff at either. I want to go to any purple zones we find, not for weapons, but for any items that could benefit us. We also want to get our hands on as many perks as possible, so we want to try to maximize our XP gains by hunting down every group of enemies there are on the map. We lucked out sonar by finding spear. sonar spikes so early on in the run. It makes Ranger's secondary ability, the Javelin, mark enemies, making them take 50% more damage from all sources. This is incredibly strong in any scenario, but more so for this one. We'll upgrade it at the Oasis though, so it can at least have some like affixes. This is very important. So for those unaware, you can actually upgrade the pistol, buddy bot, and the shovel to orange rarity in the Oasis starting hub to put affixes and alt fires on the weapons. Finding flower pot this early on is also huge. I grab this every run I can because getting stunned or hacked can turn a really strong run into a failed one in the blink of an eye. I find it especially useful for the final boss since I tend to keep attacking throughout the entire first phase, not really trying to look away when Iris hits you with her hacking flash. As you can see, the starting pistol isn't exactly deleting everything we come across. We need to try to prioritize as many weapon buffs as possible through the form of fire rate, raw damage, or even indirectly through crit damage, which is something Ranger specializes in. Ideally, we want to find favorite weapon as a perk option during one of our level ups. It would increase our weapon damage by 25% and our reload speed by 20, not to mention the javelins would get buffed as well. Dude, Iris is going to be terrified when she sees me strolling up with the default pistol. stealth cooldown we take we take stealth cooldown most of the time when it's offered because of two reasons the first is because being invisible reduces the enemy aggro on us obviously exponentially increasing our survivability the second reason is because we want to find and take shadow strike the second it's offered to us the faster our cooldown the more time we'll spend in shadow strike <laughs> You, sir, what do we get? Sonar sh shots. 30% javelin damage on hand. Can I reroll that? Are any of these rerollable? Yeah, they are. Nice. Um, maybe I should have upgraded the gun first and then made it legendary. That probably would have been way smarter, huh?
This is actually my first time using the starting pistol outside of the tutorial, let alone upgrading it to orange rarity. I've upgraded the shovel and buddy bot a few times, and they've always had the same alt fire afterwards, leading me to believe the alt fire would always be the same for each of the three weapons. Had I known the starting pistol would have had an alt fire that can mark enemies, I would have reconsidered taking a sonar spike. It's not a huge deal, since I'm going to be throwing a ton of javelins anyways, but it opens up the ability to increase our mark target damage as well. If I knew this thing was going to be able to mark by default, I would not have uh, taken the other thing. The uh, marking javelins. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Because the next... I would need marking javelins in order to get the upgrade for uh, marked enemies to take 15% more damage. Which is a big... It's a, that's a big buff. That's a big buff. 15% is nothing to scoff at. Another benefit of upgrading the pistol to the orange rarity is the Havoc Affix, which is insanely good. It increases our javelin damage by a whopping 30%, which is a huge difference. That way, even if the pistol isn't doing damage directly, it is still heavily influencing the run. Oh, that was close. I didn't finish the job. I thought I did. That's why you never quit. That's why you always gotta go the extra mile. Confirm those kills, baby. Now, all I wanted to achieve here was a completed run of G4 difficulty with the starting pistol, but we were still S rank bound by this point in the run. It seemed like a pipe dream, but to be able to pull something like that off in my first run seemed exciting, so I wanted to go for it. The problem with Oasis though is that the map is just one big circle, and you can waste a lot of time trying to maximize XP here or even push it into the S rank range. I would need to pick up the pace and kill the boss incredibly fast to secure my S rank Oasis. Non elemental damage? This thing does not have an element. Let's One thing it. I always try to do when leaving a loot cave is time my jump correctly. If you get a jump off immediately after touching the ground, you'll carry the momentum of the booster into your jump. You can also activate the jetpack, and this will allow you to cover a lot of ground very quickly if there aren't any walls in your path. We're taking a little time to go out of our path here after we clear the enemies so we can enter the orange loot area. Here at the Oasis, once you give this guy the swim trunks, you'll have an option between two orange tier items that you can choose from for free every single run. I mean, I can just take one of these, so maybe we can do that. Sure. Why not? We'll take it. Full S rank. We'll see. We'll see if we can pull up the S rank. I doubt it though. And we got our trusty Shadow Strike. The odds of maybe getting this done just went up astronomically. And there we had it, Shadow Strike. 
Now if you ask me, this is by far the strongest perk that Ranger has. It increases your damage by 25% while invisible and doesn't break the invisibility when you fire. The only downside is that the duration of the invisibility is decreased by 1 second, which is a trade-off I'm more than willing to make. I take this in every single run because it's just that much of a game changer. gotta hurry oh yes we'll take strawberries let's go strawberries is another s tier item in my opinion because it increases crit damage by 20 percent after scoring a crit that's a big deal now this may not be practical when clearing mobs due to the majority of them having small crit zones but for bossing this is one of the strongest items you can get I was starting to run out of time if I wanted my S rank. This is the time you should have left on the clock when entering the boss fight in most situations, but I was still mobbing in an arena. The goal of S ranking this on my first try was starting to slip away. Time is running out. I have to like shred this guy. Luckily, it was Billy Boom, a mostly stationary boss with an easy to hit crit spot. If we had either of the other two bosses for this fight, we wouldn't have stood a chance. But with Billy, there was still a faint trace of hope. Come on. That was so close. We got it though. We got the S. <laughs> Woo. Finding french fries is great because it decreases your invisibility cooldown by 10% anytime you land a crit, and we hit crits quite a bit, so this will help us stay in invisibility longer, meaning that we're going to have shadow strike up longer, meaning that we'll do more damage more often. We will make this thing monstrous. We need to get favorite weapon to roll already. I never let those ro rovers get out of here, dude. Give me that loot every single time. We actually picked up a really important perk after the Billy Boom fight called Void Hunter. 
This makes our damage during Shadow Strike increase to a bonus 75% instead of a bonus 25%, which should dramatically increase our damage. Jesus, that was just like the first room. fire rate we do need the weapon damage i feel that's a tough decision that is a tough decision um i'm not i don't know let's just take the power cell we're gonna be a little short on power cells this run because we're rocking a legendary weapon so in hindsight, I should have taken the Hourglass. At this point in the run, I was already depending on favorite weapon to show up in the perk list, which would have also increased the fire rate of the pistol, counteracting the negative effects of the Hourglass. Stealth cooldown or improved analysis. We're gonna take improved analysis because we gotta bump the damage numbers up. This would have been nice. Damn. Pistol is coming together a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit. That mark damage is making a difference. We were in the same boat as last time. I had entered another arena and I was running out of time. Luckily, there was no boss fight at the end of this, so maybe I could still get out with the S rank. Very important that that man dies. Those elites are terrifying. Those flamethrowers out of here, the blind guy can die too.
What do we got here? Supreme Critical. Ooh, we have Favorite Weapon and Supreme Critical. We gotta go with Favorite Weapon, but Supreme Critical is S And just like that, our S rank run for our first ever G4 attempt, and with a starter pistol no less, was kaput. All hopes of achieving the Rockstar status I made up for myself were dashed against the rocks like a limp chicken in the wind. No, we dropped the A rank. Rip. We dropped down to A rank. So much for the S run. It wasn't all bad, though. We finally ended up getting our favorite weapon perk. The original goal of this run was still within reach. I'm doing it without Ranger. Honestly, it's probably very doable. I don't think Ranger is just like a like blanket statement the best. You know, I, I think it's just the one I'm the best with. I could learn some more of the other ones, though. It is dicey up in here. I think Commando could do it too. He has a lot of firepower outside of the weapons. Yeah, I actually haven't played too much Commando, but that like his passive is extremely interesting. It seems very strong on pen and paper at least. And usually with roguelikes, that means it's infinitely stronger than it is on pen and paper. Doomed. I know, I love doing that out of the caves. It's so fun. Dude, I I'm fucking 900 IQ. Did you see that? I threw the spear to where he was teleporting. Flip that. Flip that. And you know what? Make it my pride and joy. I'm going to show that to my family on Christmas. That's going to be my gift for them. Use this movement speed. Honestly, we should probably take that. Uh, energy. This is a mag type, so no energy here. Let's see here. Go with one more javelin. Honestly, I probably could have rerolled that. Did I already use up my rerolls?
Taking the third javelin there was the right call. I second guessed myself, wondering if I should have re-rolled with a potential fire rate perk or weapon damage perk as an evolution of favorite weapon, but it wouldn't have been worth it. Focusing on javelins is the smarter thing in this scenario. I do need some more practice with some uh, non-decoy based classes, I think, though. I hope this isn't turning into a crutch for me. I hope I can still play the game, like, with Guardian or something. I, I swear, I, I don't play Ranger. For the in well, I do play for the invis, but I don't play it for the decoy. And the sa same with a uh, recon. I don't play it for the decoy either. Actually, I don't think Ranger has a decoy by default, does he? I think he just has the stun when he teleports. I think you have to you have to like spec into the decoy, I believe. Ooh, ooh, we are getting very, very close to the, to death here. We got a. Move faster. Lots of flame troopers right now. Or flame sentries? I don't know what those are. We did it. Let's go. This is probably the scariest part of the run for me, just because the, when it's whenever it's the fire chamber, dude, it is terrifying. Hardest one in my opinion. getting hit by that. Get him out of here. Alrighty. Let's keep her going. Yo, what's up, Mike? Any NG fans in chat? Not me, unfortunately. I gotta, I gotta try him out some more. I gotta try him out some more. I'm not giving him enough credit. We're gonna save on these. All right, hold on to those. That's right. Just target the decoy. You got this, Judge Ball. This is this is the correct judgment. Alrighty. Increased weapon damage. We do like that. We do indeed like that a lot. So let's take it. Gotta make our pistol stronger. Respear vibes, not gonna lie. Oh, we love Respear. Big Borderlands energy. I should have re rolled there. I literally just killed a boss by almost exclusively throwing javelins into their crit spot. And while the pistol is adding a substantial amount of bonus damage to our javelins, we are no longer using the gun to do noticeable damage. I could have re rolled for another chance at a javelin or more focus points. Do I know you, sir? <laughs> Should I know you?
feel like I read that name not too long ago. Some secret difficulty mode for harder bosses than the last bosses there. Um, I don't know about secret difficulty mode, no. But we're playing through G4 right now. Those are uh, difficulties that are higher than hard difficulty, though. And you get them every time you beat the game on the hardest difficulty you have available. Haven is probably my favorite place each run. We have a small arena available in its entirety right off the bat and it gives the player more control over the progression. We have multiple vendor spots that I can visit while clearing out the goliaths and opening the exit. See, True Shot is nice, but we're not running a weapon with a low fire rate, and it has a lot of ammo. It's a DPS weapon, so maybe we skip over True Shot right here. But if we take it, it would have the potential... Mm, we'll take it, just because it holds 12 shots, so half the mag will be stronger anytime I go stealth, and then we'll be able to bump that up to 8, so 75% will be able to... Well... Not 75, but... Oh, wait. Yeah, 75. Never mind. Oh, my God. You know how I said we might throw the challenge run if a kunai drops? Well, there is a kunai back there, and I am quite tempted. I'm half tempted to go back there and grab that kunai and just say, fuck it, we'll do, we'll do this challenge again some other time. I do love my kunai. What is doing this to me? Where, where's, where's, where's the enemy that is constantly trying to hack me? Or stun me? Yeah, yeah, who's doing that? I don't see them anywhere. Are you hitting me from across the map with that? No bazaar over there. I haven't seen any of the storefronts yet. They must all be over here. That was not good. I just treated him like the one Goliath that shoots to the sides of you. Could not have done that. That almost got me killed. 
The difference between G4 and the other Guardian ranks, and every other difficulty below Guardian ranks for that matter, is that you need to show respect to every single enemy, including run-of-the-mill bots. If you are not showing them the proper respect and you are playing aggressively in areas where maybe you shouldn't, they can abruptly end your run because they will almost delete you. It happened to me in that previous section, I got oh, very close to death because I wasn't paying enough attention and I didn't react accordingly to a, some random bot's attack. It almost ended up killing me. I've lost future runs due to that exact reason. On G4, you need to learn to show respect for every single enemy you come across, or your runs will come to a very abrupt end. Fire rate! I mean- oh wait, no we want that true shot augment. It was right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm still making the mistake of trying to let the pistol do the damage here. Friends don't let friends throw runs. True. Dark's got my back. I want to go to the stadium first, just to see what the chest offers us. Oh, and we have a few more ads to kill on the way. Never hurts. Get a little bit more XP going. Yikes. Nothing of interest to me here. Yo, know, man, mask. How does the Doom Garden's timer work? It seems almost impossible to run through. It makes it some timer just back up. I don't get it. So I actually have a YouTube video on getting the six power crystals. If that's what you're working on, you can check that out. But if you're just talking about the Doom Gardens, whenever you kill the bombers, they will drop a yellow resource on the ground and that will extend your timer. Is it just me or do you level slower in 1.0 than in early access? Um, I only played early access the day before 1.0 release, so I don't have a real good gauge on that. I literally, I'm like brand new to the game, so. Not brand new, because, you know, I've been playing a lot, but. Let's do it. Hey, thank you for the follow, Mike. Appreciate it, man. Ouch, we really just ate like all of those almost. <laughs> Hello? 
fellas. Yo, that almost just ended the run right there. Whatever stunned me almost just ended the run. That was terrifying. We gotta be careful. Maybe we'll stick to the sky for a little bit. Yeah, unless this guy has something to say about that, apparently. Ranger senses. We take that. That was close. I saw that at the last second. Shit, that was that was close. That was close. I didn't see that one either. All right, I'm really hoping we get Uncle Jim. I think Uncle Jim is just so free. Hey, thanks for the follow, Nova. Appreciate it. Uncle Jim. Yes! Let's go. Crit damage. We'll take crit damage. We were finally done with District 13. We were finally at the last location. Time to take on the moon and fight Iris. Your video, thanks. Oh, thanks for checking it out, Nova. First tried teal crystal. Hell yeah, that's what we like to hear. That is what we like to hear. Good stuff. One step closer to not getting under pit. True.
Oh, oh no, we got stuck. Oh, that was close. That was close. Alright, that's one Goliath down. That's two. Keep producing that stealth cooldown. That's our last upgrade of the run. Let's get it. After clearing the first room on the moon, with that much health remaining, I was feeling confident going into the second. I know the they cheat. Both Goliaths down already. Yeah, destroying that earlier on probably would have been smarter, huh? Who's got time to think when you're slaying out on the moon, though? All right, here I come, Iris. I've killed Iris many times before, but this time I was a little scared. You know, this is more of like a javelin run, <laughs> but the reason my javelin is doing so absurdly good like it's it's good on its own but the reason it's so doing so absurdly good is because i have havoc here so they get an extra 30 percent damage just by me holding this gun so you know technically the pistol is still pulling its weight considerably My usual strategy here, if I feel like I'm doing enough damage, is just to ignore the bots that are filling up Iris's meter. I can stay alive long enough once the laser wall comes out to finish Iris. But with the pistol here, that might have not been the best option. I maybe should have focused that down because Iris got her walls fast. By using the grapple to travel from one side of the room to the other, I'm able to maintain my position in the air and kill time long enough for the walls to run out of energy. This is a strategy I found out very early on, and I've been using it ever since reliably. Here we go.
Iris Phase 2 is kind of a cakewalk if you're playing Ranger because 90% of her attacks are always targeted towards your decoy. There we go. First try on G4. We, as soon as we unlocked G4, we went in there pistol only and uh, we got it done. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was fun. I liked that. It was a good time. I can't wait to use weapons that are going to be like better too. That's gonna be awesome. That was a 43 minute run though, jeez. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna hang out live, come check out my Twitch in the description. And if you wanna support the channel, please consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing. I hope you all have a great day. I'm Hatterax, signing off. Peace.